and um, everyone enjoyed the day yesterday. Yes, yes. definitely. I'm sure we're going to have another fully packed day today. I think we've covered some exciting topics, notices, and court auditing, and yeah. start to pull it all together a bit. Um, what we want to do for um, Oxfordshire, um, I know some of you have travelled a long way to be here. We are trying to get a, a solid group together here in Oxfordshire. So I'm going to pass around a piece of paper for people who are local, close-ish. The reason for this is um, so that we can start going into the courts. You know, if someone's in court, we can all pull together, turn up as witnesses, audit the courts, and start holding, to, holding them to account, start actually using what we're learning. Because having knowledge is one thing, but if we don't use it... It's meaningless. Knowledge isn't yeah. power unless you use it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're happy to share your the first half of your postcode and your phone number, what we'll do is start a telegram group so that we can all keep in touch with each other yes. and start to actually sort the system yeah. out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you say local, local to this town? Oxfordshire, the county. And, and, for, and for guys who are... If you're interested, just... Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Just those, ask, those are... On that list, because I've come in halfway through, is there a place on there to say which county you're from? Because some of them are outside Actually, Oxford. So, it's my do, you wanna, do you want to. Okay, let me just explain what I'm trying to set up. Okay, basically, uh, I won't be talking about it too much, but I may as well introduce it and give you an idea of. I've got a strategy behind what I'm trying to do here. Mm -hmm. okay. And a, a lot of uh, stuff that's out there is just, you know, very particular uh, and very focused. Um, now, Liam, how does that go? Jack of all trades, master of none, but... Uh, Jack of all trades, master of none is still better than the master at one. Yeah, okay. And I firmly believe what our problem is, we over-specialise, we have little boxes. And very few people have the ability to step back and actually look at the foundations and the whole picture. So, <clears throat> this is what I'm trying to do. Without the rule of law, money is meaningless and property ownership is meaningless. Okay? So, hence I started with the peacekeeper course. So, that's a, you know, teaching about rights and giving people the basics and the substance, the standing that you need when, so, you know, when a policeman comes in your face. But as we saw yesterday, it's really simple. If a policeman or anybody asks you to do something, you simply turn around and say, can I ask him to do the same thing you're asking me to do? If the answer is no, it's unlawful what you're asking me to do. It's a privilege. Okay? So really, that's how simple this boils down to. And, and so the rule of law is foundational to a, a peaceful society. Without the rule of law, there can be no peace. So with that is then, how do we interact with one another? And that's what we're doing now with the notices this morning. We'll do that. And then we move on to actually enforcement, which is through the courts. In the existing system, however, we've, the existing is collapsing. We can't stop that. We need to build a new. So the idea is to make a by voluntary association is the best words that I can use to find for it. Because I was thinking about private members association. And then you've got people thinking, oh, private, oh, bloody Freemasons and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> so the best words I can use to describe it is by voluntary association. And in essence, that's the creation of a living constitution. Okay, we rely on constitutional documents, you know, the Bill of Rights, for instance, 1688. None of us were there. What's it going to do with us? Nothing. We live in today. <clears throat> so, in essence, what we were saying yesterday was we create the law. So, actually, the law created in the judiciary, the rules of law, equity, that there actually is the Constitution. And so, what we do is we uh, give an undertaking to one another in all our affairs, we will act in good faith, I mean with honour. Honour means my word is my bond, I walk my talk. We will act uh, in good faith. Good faith means I will not put my self-interest above that of anybody else, and clean hands, I'll do everything openly and transparently, i.e. cut out all the crap. So that is the foundation of it, and then we've got the six fundamental laws, ignorance of the law, there's no excuse to lie as to go against the mind, all equal under the law, um, no one's 
above the law, the due process of law, and that. So literally, on one A4 paper, you making an undertaking, we all make an undertaking to one another. This is how I will interact with you. And by you giving that, I expect you to interact with me. Therefore, we've got duties, rights, and obligations to one another by consent, our free will consent. We all have a, a, um, a uh, condition, socially conditioned belief system. Therefore, we may have a different belief as to what our right is. Therefore, dispute is inevitable. It's part of being together with people. However, because we undertake and we have standing as to how we will interact, that will minimize. And then uh, the notice is, is basically how we resolve or attempt to resolve dispute in the private. And if we cannot resolve it in the private, then we have a public dispute system. Okay, and when we talk about the court order to manual, we're talking about trial by jury versus trial by written decisions and that. And so, what you're doing is, we're giving an undertaking to one another. This is how I behave. When we have a dispute, this is how we'll attempt to resolve it in private before we ask society to resolve the dispute for us. Um, and so, to structure this, basically, yep, yeah, it's a pyramid. However, it's a pyramid designed only for the flow of information and for a resolving disputes. All the decisions are made at the grassroots. So basically the idea is that at the grassroots you have groups of 13, no more than 13, once it's, uh, you know, mature. So in essence you get together a group of 13 when it hits 26, you split down into two groups of 13. When there's 39, you split down into three groups of 13, and so forth. And each group has a facilitator or whatever, I don't know what we can call it. And their job is literally to be neighborly and go around everybody frequently, you know, every day, every second day, once a week, get together. And if somebody's got a problem, they go around and say, have we got a solution in our group for somebody's problem? So we start to look out for one another. If we can't find a solution in our group of 13, the facilitator is also a member of the next group. So you've got 13 groups at the bottom. Each of them has one facilitator at the next level. So you, somebody's got a problem in one group, they then the facilitator goes up if they can't find a solution. Those facilitators go back to their grassroots level and say, oh, somebody's got this question or this suggestion or this problem. Does anybody now from the 169 got a solution to this? If a solution is there, it goes back up to the facilitator, back down, that group of 13 deal with it. Um, <clears throat> then if it's not found there, basically it goes up another level because there's also a facilitator there who represents that group at the next level. So now you're putting the problem out to 2,000 odd people. You go up to the next level, okay, now you're talking about 20, 25,000. The next level, you're talking about a quarter of a million. And basically, by going up uh, eight levels, every person on the planet, man, woman, and child, has a say in the bottom grassroots, and any question can go up to everybody on the planet in theory, you can do this with telegram groups or whatever, uh, and literally, instantly, it can go out the question or the suggestion or anything to millions, hundreds of millions, billions of people. Nobody can make a decision at the top. The grassroots is the only place that decisions are made what they want. So literally, you've got democracy, direct democracy at a level of 13 people. Um, and to impose the will of the group, <coughs> uh, you need a supermajority of 80%. So literally what you're signing up is, before society can impose its will on me, 80% of them need to agree with it. Okay? And equally in the courts, okay, as we see, there'll be lots of discussion about trial by jury. 
Uh, what many people don't realize is that originally with trial by jury, it was a unanimous decision was thrown out. It was void. Yeah. Okay. Because of the risk of somebody swaying the whole jury. Okay. And that's a real risk. So it's about the flow of information and structuring. And so down here, so basically I think it's a, at the second level. So at this level, it's the first part of the postcode. The postcode basically uh, covers a, a physical area. We need to get away from this nonsense of counties and countries and this. Because to, uh, uh, it's not land-based. It's people-based, so it needs to depend on the population. And so this model, basically, anybody can start it anywhere in the world and become a part of the flow of information up and down. If they want to build a road between this village and this village, and that interferes with all of these, it means these people make the decision. Nobody <coughs> from the top says what can or can't be done. The other thing is, it's about the creation of money, okay? Because in essence, let's look at council tax. What you're doing is you're taking people's time to put towards the benefit of the community. They therefore can't go and build their house, or they can't grow their food, or they can't do their plumbing, or their electrics. So we as a community decide what is of benefit to us at the level of 13. So. For instance, one of the members breaks the lake, can't go shopping. We put the question out to the 13, is somebody going to go shopping? Yeah, okay, you get two hours if you do the shopping every week for the person with a broken leg. And we create money based upon our time. And so uh, a big shocker to people is, what makes you think your time is worth any more than anybody else's? So quite simply, what's more important, your backside or your brain? Yes. Quite simply, one can't work without the other. Okay. Uh, and so we've got to overcome this thing that I'm more important than you. So if somebody thinks counting butterflies is a good idea, okay, and they can convince 80% of the people in the group, they can create credit there now for their man hours by contributing something. And everybody's got something to contribute. Okay. Uh, whilst other people do other things. So the community should be where we create money. Now because those people are giving their time to the community, they can't be growing their food etc. They then take that money that the community has created and then we start to trade between one another. So in effect what we're doing is setting up a private currency and 30 to 50 percent of our expenditure is labor. So straight away we take that out of the existing banking system. Um, and uh, it allows everybody to come up with some idea they've got to benefit the community. So the idea, like I say, what you do is you have a telegram group at this level, then you have a facilitators group at this level, a facilitators group at this level, and so you, have, you start off with a worldwide facilitator group of 13, uh, then once you get to 26, that splits down into two continental facilitator groups. That then splits down into country facilitator groups. That then goes down into regional facilitator groups and so forth, based upon population. So none of this first past the post nonsense or that. But it's about flow of information. So this, uh, uh, I've got a structure, but I've got to get around to putting it out, and that just takes time, just like the core auditor course and all the rest of the stuff. Um, so we've got to start uh, building these facilitator groups, and based upon the first half of your postcode, <coughs> that there allows that level to start to build. And then you go into the rest of the postcode, and the first half, of the, and, and the whole thing is that literally, you just need your first name. And you join the group where you're in the postcode because I don't want to get into this GDPR nonsense and all of this sort of stuff. But use whatever na name you want so long as you guys in the group know one another. And you can put out exactly like uh, Ron was saying. The idea is we can form then 
uh, within each uh, district, you know, each area in the country, there's 146 magistrates courts in the country. If we can form a group there in each of those, even if it means that in the beginning we have one person who covers, say, 10 magistrates courts, they then can concentrate on gathering the evidence uh, of unlawful behaviour within the courts and we'll be going through that with the, when we do the court auditor calls. So that we can start to set up things. Rowan had a brilliant idea yesterday, or uh, not yesterday, I'm sure he's been thinking about it for a while, but he expressed it yesterday. <coughs> to stop this facial recognition nonsense and all these security cameras, why don't we all just GDPR the supermarket? We're going to we know when to make a record over a month when we were there, and then we're just going to snap in a GDPR. Oh, right. right. And uh, I'll plate record. <coughs> All of these things. Okay? So we can then form a subgroup for that. And that subgroup then, they can go and make the templates and, you know, you know improve it. And then at the end of the day, how the hell are they going to answer all these GDPR requests? Because yeah, yeah. they've got to look for each person the whole month to verify is that person there or not? Yeah? I don't know what the GDPR is. Data protection General data. Uh, uh, regulations. regulations. But basically, anybody that holds data and they're holding data from the cameras. Yes. So tell me what data you got about me. Why you? Why are you holding that data? Uh, and if you haven't got a good reason to leak that data, and give me copies of all. And give me copies of the data. <laughs> but basically, Make that would allow you know to concentrate the knowledge and have a body of excellence build up for that. That's a brilliant thing. Most people don't realise East Germany was brought down because basically what the people did was they just overwhelmed them with information. <coughs> Everybody was just putting in crap. And they just got overwhelmed, and in two weeks the whole system collapsed. Yeah. These things work. But with a structure like this, you could say, okay, Rowan's got this idea, GDPR. We put it up, we put it down to everybody, and then we'll find from you know multiple groups, people have got the same common interest, and therefore they can concentrate their minds to create the change. So that, that is something else that I'm working on. Uh, and, but that there is to build the new. So with the court auditor then, the idea of that is we give them the opportunity to correct their ways because it's all about honour. And what you'll see, the notices, is a very, very simple and powerful tool. So we'll move straight into that. Uh, but we'll get around to creating this structure and if you can just put the first half of your postcode, it doesn't really matter. We can start doing it. Okay, so um, people ask about you know 5G and chemtrails and council tax and you know everything. At the end of the day, the basics, we are all connected through our conscience. That's what connects us all to source and to one another. Our conscience dictates right from wrong. There is only right and there is only wrong. There's no half right or half wrong. An action is either positive or it's negative. Uh, so we've got to get rid of this subjective nonsense. It's totally objective. We feel it. But what happens is, like I was saying yesterday, we, we get this thing up here which interferes with the knowing. Okay. So what is knowing? If I learn to drive, I, you know, I'm concentrating, living in the moment, how to push the clutch and gear, and this and that and the other. Once we know how to drive, that moves into our subconscious. When it moves into our subconscious, because we haven't got the power to process everything at, at once, the subconscious works on exceptions. So when we're driving, the subconscious is looking for things which are misguided. And hence, uh, you know, if a child appears, our foot's already on the brake before we even think about what's happening. That's what we need to start relying on and trusting. And that's something that I've started to learn to do. I trust the universe now. I don't trust this thing up here 
This is here knows and it goes in advance. There's huge amounts of science to support uh, this belief, it's our best understanding, and it's scientifically evidence. That, that they'll take, they'll have a whole load of pictures, for instance, and they'll measure your body, and then they'll go like this, your body's reacting because it already knows what's there. Okay? Well-established science, i.e. your knowing differs from your slow processing of the consciousness. So, uh, we need to learn to trust our instincts, because our gut is right, it knows. Uh, and just simply accept there is something greater than ourselves. So, when we go and do it, because nobody can bring the creator, the source, whatever you want to call it, into a court, with logic and reason, there, nobody can evidence that anybody can impose their will on another. Therefore, it is self-evident, okay? And this is something that we need to really start with. It's self-evident. All are equal under the law. Nobody is above the law. Nobody has the right to impose their will on any other person. Uh, and we need to get into the consciousness about property. It is self-evident. All of us are entitled to an equal share of creations, creations. I even will learn to share the stuff nice. If we started to share stuff nice, we live in peace. Okay, okay you've got kids. Uh, if one's got something and the other has a belief they have a right to it, they start fighting. But if they've both got something, there's no fighting. Okay? We're all fighting over, you know, the right to survive or a reasonable <coughs> standard of living. So, with those self-evident truths, uh, is where we need to start. It means I stand in my own right, not subject to anybody else. And I have the right to follow my conscience, which dictates right from wrong, and <coughs> wrong is a harm. And when I do wrong, I need to provide remedy where I wronged somebody. And the wrong extends to the environment as well. And therefore we must apply humanity's best knowledge because we trustees for future generations, we need to apply the best available knowledge so that we do not knowingly cause creation harm. So this covers the environment and everything. Okay. Um, so by standing in your own right, we stand as equals. To me, truth is sovereign, not people. Because Sovereignty means the power to act, the authority to act. And if there's a power greater than us, and that to me is truth, that's the purpose of life to me. My purpose in life is to find the truth. Because the truth sets me free. So, uh, it's not about uh, anything else sovereignty. A power greater than us is truth. Whether, like I said yesterday, if you walk over the edge of a cliff, the truth will prevail, doesn't matter what you believe. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, so, uh, with that, we've got to get out of this concept that, you know, I'm the boss, I'm the sovereign. We're not, we're all equal. Okay. So, with the notices, it's about the ap application of best available knowledge. So, like we said yesterday, well, I said yesterday, I did lots of talking yesterday. <laughs> Natural law is quite simple. The highest truth will prevail, and if I do nothing, I have no rights. Simple as that. So, natural law is those who stand on their rights, and to do that, you need to know yourself and your power and your rights. Harm no one, and those who don't have none. That's natural law. And they're using this, though, in a perverted way. The way that they're using it is, I've told you. Okay? So, the question becomes, so let's take 5G. I've told you I'm putting up a mast in front of your house. And you've done nothing about it. However, once the knowledge base increases, hang on, this stuff is harmful. 
So what should happen is we stand on our rights. As our knowledge improves, we've got to stop harmful activity. So the purpose of the notice is uh, to ask people, have you followed your due diligence? I.e., if I'm doing 5G, have I done all reasonable, uh, humanly possible, to apply humanity's best available knowledge? Okay? We know microwaves cook, for, cook food and change things. Have you actually checked, because you're playing on the microwave thing, what effect is this having on not only humans, but birds, insects, plants, trees, the whole, whole lot? So, he who asserts must prove. If you believe you have a right, go ahead and do it. But once somebody stands up and questions that right, you must cease and desist until that dispute is settled. So, um, uh, with one of my aha moments, it was innocent until proven guilty. It's the most powerful tool we have. He who asserts must prove is what they call trite, is the legal language. Trite being a really sarcastic term in their language, okay? Uh, meaning, hey, hey, come on, this is so darn obvious, we don't even need to discuss it. Okay? So, with that, as soon as you see a wrong, you need to stand on your right. If you've got knowledge that that's causing harm, you need to say, hey, listen, you can't carry on behaving like this. So, the notices are actually cease and desist. And stop your belief, prove your right, let's sort out the best available human knowledge, and then... Once we've sorted that, and if what you're doing is okay, based upon our best knowledge, you can continue. So you need to cease now, because I need you to prove your right, and desist until society's reached, either we've privately reached a resolution, or society has imposed its will. So, with the notices, that there really is the context of it. I put you with the knowledge, which is, I, I just simply call it, and I'm trying to use their words as well, they use these words. We start with the portion. Okay? And if you ignore, don't heed the caution, then you get a warning. Okay? And then you get a final warning or a letter before action. Does this structure look familiar to anybody? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> it's used all the time against you. Yeah. Okay? Somebody has a belief, they send you a bill, which is a claim. And then if you don't act on that, you then are breaching their peace, and so they give you another chance, because they're honourable. They send you a reminder, a warning. Yeah. Uh, and if you still don't act upon that, then they give you one final chance. Mm -hmm. Why three? This here puts you with facts. I require you to prove your claim that your actions are lawful with 5G. In order to breach your peace, I need to show lawful excuse. I can't just breach anybody's peace will you know? And it's come to my attention, and I'm now with the knowledge that you're dealing with microwave radiation, and I've got a microwave oven, and that really changes things. <coughs> Can you show me the evidence that you followed your due diligence <coughs> to uh, ensure that it's safe? So the first notice puts the people with the facts. Now, if I'm making a complaint against somebody, I need to say what remedy I want. Because it's all about returning to the peace. If I've got a one-to-one -one dispute, I need to say, okay, guys, I've got a problem with what you're doing, and to solve my problem, you need to provide the remedy and prove 5G is safe, based upon the best available knowledge. Show me you have followed your due diligence. If they ignore that, so council sent you a bill, it's a claim, sent. You do nothing, you get the reminder. This here is your first witness. Okay? It's the first witness that I've put you with the facts, and it's the first witness you've not provided remedy to. 
you are not dealt with the problem. Okay. And the final warning is your second witness. Okay? So I've now got the second witness of the fact and the second witness that you dis dishonored. From the mouths of two witnesses made the truth be established. So people that come with, you know, oh you need seven notices and affidavits and all of this and all of that is one. This is all you need, three. And this is the reason you only need three. I put you with the facts of my claim or my belief. You've ignored me. So this is my first witness that I put you with the facts and the first witness of your dishonor. And this is my second witness I put you with the facts and the second witness of your dishonor. Three notices, that's all you need. Okay? <coughs> so what is a notice? What does that mean? It simply means putting somebody with knowledge. That's all it is. So whether you want to call it a notice, a bill, a you know, correspondence, or whatever, it makes no difference. Equity is substance. Okay? So if you don't start it off as notice, okay, does that really matter in substance? Because this is the substance. Okay? So don't fear if you're using the wrong words. It's your expression of what you're doing. There's no one format to do anything. What's important is that what you are trying to express is expressed and understood as you intend it. Okay? So you do your best to express whatever you try, message you're trying to get across. Because you are responsible for your communications. So most problems and squabbles start because somebody miscommunicated. Yeah. So I've made a huge attempt over the last few years to actually try and be more accurate. In, am I expressing my message clearly? And is it being understood as intended? Because I am responsible for that. I can't blame somebody else for misunderstanding what I'm trying to say. It's my problem. I accept responsibility. As I say, your shit own it. Okay. And so, basically, I start my notices as a caution notice, opportunity to do a remedy. So it's pretty clear that what I'm saying. Hey, listen, take caution, take heed, and and I'm giving you a chance to fix the problem, the dis resolve the dispute. That's just what I use. People can use whatever they want. Okay? With the notices, though, you need to keep a unique reference number of all your notices. So just make your own register of notices that you give. And with your register, basically, what's changing is your first one is the caution notice. And to shortcut this process when they don't give you a full, accurate, and complete response, and we'll talk about this, Okay, all you do is your warning notice, your warning is in respect of the caution notice you sent. So it's a very short thing saying, hey listen, I gave you the notice, but you've not answered them. Are we on a particular page? Uh, uh, no, uh, 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 this year is not in the matter. Uh, this is uh, silent. Uh, there actually is a downloadable thing about it. Uh, you know, you can download it. So the warning notice is in respect of the caution notice I've sent you. So basically, I sent you a caution notice reference da da dated da da. You failed to respond uh, as requested. I grant you a further seven days, or whatever you want, to respond to my caution notice. And you simply enclose your caution notice. The caution notice is the long <coughs> first notice. And then the final one is, in respect to the warning notice of the caution notice of the mm -hmm. notice. Okay. So again, you enclose your short warning notice, the long caution 